I want to talk some more about hand crank embroidery and um, just because it's bugging me behind the machine are all the bobbin boxes it looks like a stack of paper uh, through the camera but it's bobbin boxes and that's a wonderful way to keep colors um, many colors of thread because you can use those as a top thread too but anyway hand crank embroidery and Christiana's video and her fish design. Um, I have to finish several dishcloths um, and I'm filling in the images that I had already block printed. Now this with the spoon, this is the V-stitch that I had um, started to develop on the Red Cross. And what I think I'm going to um, find myself doing is similar to as you develop your own pen and ink style, I'm going to be developing stitches that give an effect that I want whatever I'm working on to have. Now this spoon is ending up reminding me of a wooden spoon, even though in my mind they're metallic. So um, using a type of stitch and texture is an advantage. But there are five spoons on this one, so it's going to take me a while to fill them in. And then along came um, Christiana's video, which she had been trying to send to me. And all of a sudden, I was like, wow, now I can think about a different angle of approach. I have, um, this is, if you follow me, sometimes I take things with me to like doctor's offices and stuff like that. This is a little tree, and I drew this on scrap fabric in colored pencil and I then used a cording foot to put the trunk in and now I have silk thread on a bobbin and a hand needle and I was going to stick this in my pocket just like that with one of the most wonderful things in the world a portable sewing kit with tiny scissors and I was going to take that with me and work on it wherever I go. Well now, even though I do have doctor's appointments coming up, now that I've seen Christiana's video, I'm going to try this in hand crank embroidery instead. And this brings up an idea I have and a suggestion. I'm working on a pattern um, with that I build something out of squares, and they're not going to have batting in them. They're basically going to be um, two pieces of fabric stitched together around the edges, and then, then you do something with them. But I can use those as pages as well. Um, so I'm going to, I have to pick out a size. I'm going to make some little squares that are two layers of fabric stitched around the edges and those are going to be my pages for hand crank embroidery and then say when I get five or six of them together I'm going to stitch them together on one end and make a book and it's a wonderful way to save your own embroidery and show it off um, and it makes it just a, a, it, you know it'll go with your needle book I have a needle book I made the same way well, now I'm going to make a little hand crank embroidery book. Now, I can't do that with bigger pieces that have other functions. But And, and even if I do some of this by hand, which I don't think I'm going to do now, um, you can do it that way, too. This is a great one. It's a vintage, um, I forget what it was called. But it's skinny and will fit in my pocket. I, I love sewing kits. I have several um, this is the tiniest, so that's a good idea. But with so I'm going to be using the 237 as a hand crank, both for developing stitches, for using Christiana's method um, that she's using on the 99. To uh, I'm going to try and do it her way. She doesn't use a hoop. And um, it's the manipulating of the fabric and getting 
the curves and the and the shapes in that is challenging. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, I also want to make my dog a bunch of little dog things. And Mia, in her uh, treadle embroidery video, had said there's a method of transferring a design where you trace it onto paper. In my case, I block printed it. And then stitch right around it. So you can do it that way. If you, um, but one thing about Christiana, she doesn't have a drawing on there or a tracing or anything. She's cre just creating. And um, I think essentially that would be the ultimate goal for all of us. But because for me it's easier to follow this shape, this would be a test for her method of doing the embroidery on whether I can do it or not. Now, I can either just stitch through the tracing paper. The reason I uh, block printed this one was I was going to make a major tracing and then um, just keep tracing them onto fabric. You can also just draw it freehand in chalk if you want guidelines. So those are a few ideas. And when you get to something complicated, like a drawing in cotton. Normally when I draw that, I mean, you see a green leaf and a pile of fluffy cotton. What I see are about a million and a half veins and cells in the leaf that I have to take from detailed pen and ink stippling into thread if I'm going to do that. So then you start thinking about simplifying what you're really looking at. And again, it's a wonderful mental exercise to um, learn how to project an image in different ways. So um, it's all very inspiring. And um, I think it's helpful, too. Because if I make a little book of different embroidery attempts, even if they're not very good or... Um, you know, if they're not fine art or, or whatever. Even if they're not practical, they actually could be practical. You could take patches like this and put them on an apron for pockets and make aprons. Um, use them on patches for clothes. So there's so much here to explore with hand crank embroidery. Now, another th thing I want to mention, I went to the surgeon yesterday and I won't know for a while. I have to have a bunch of more tests, um, ultrasounds and CAT scans and all kinds of stuff um, before he can determine whether or not I need the surgery. But what he said was exercise is good. Even though this is an artery issue, um, exercise is good. I can treadle. I can ride a bike. I can ride my exercise bike. Um, what happens is I start to do something and my leg either cramps up or, or gets very painful. And he said, so then that's when you stop. And you wait a while and you do it again. So after the surgery, I probably wouldn't be able to use my leg like that. But for right now, he said, exercise is always good. So it's the moving now and the packing and whatever soreness I have in my leg that would keep me from doing these same ideas with a treadle. So I just have to play it by uh, day by day and, and how things are going. In addition, um, this is a very quiet machine set up like this. And the White Family Rotary now has a hand crank. I could use that one. Or uh, the 66, I'm waiting for a special foot for that. But that won't be here for a couple of weeks, I don't think. So I think I'm I'm kind of saying, just do it. Grab any machine that's around. Look at Christiana's video and just try it. Because what you're doing is drawing with thread. And if you do it without a tracing or drawing, um, you're expressing yourself. And there can never be anything negative about that. 